Aloha, everyone. This is another devotional from Go, Go For God Ministries, or Go For God Devotionals. I'm Pastor Darrell, of course, of Calvary Chapel, Pearl Harbor, a Chosen Generation radio broadcast. Here we are at Thanksgiving, a beautiful time of get, gathering of family and friends and, and feasting together, and of course, giving thanks to our Heavenly Father. I'd like to just take a moment and just share with you a, a brief uh, article that I came across and that was very succinct in talking about Thanksgiving, and it goes as follows. The original Thanksgiving celebration was held by the Pilgrim settlers in Massachusetts during their second winter in America in December of 1621. The first winter had killed 44 of the original 102 colonists. At one point, their daily food ration was down to five kernels of corn apiece. But then an unexpected trading vessel arrived, swapping them beaver pelts for corn, providing for their severe need. The next summer's crop brought hope, and Governor William Bradford decreed that December 13, 1621, be set aside as a day of feasting and prayer to show the gratitude of the colonists that they were still alive. These pilgrims seeking religious freedom and opportunity in America gave thanks to God for his provision for them and helping them find 20 acres of cleared land for the fact that there were no hostile Indians in that area for their newfound religious freedom and for God's provision of an interpreter to the Indians in Squanto. Along with the feasting and games involving the colonists and more than 80 friendly Indians who added to the feast by bringing wild turkeys and venison, prayers, sermons, and songs of praise were important in the celebration. Three days were spent in feasting and prayer. From that time forward, Thanksgiving has been celebrated as a day to give thanks to God for his gracious and sufficient provision. President Abraham Lincoln officially set aside the last Thursday of November in 1863 as a day of feasting and praise to our Heavenly Father. In 1941, Congress ruled that after 1941, the fourth Thursday of November be observed as a day of Thanksgiving and be a legal holiday in the United States of America. Scripturally, we find things related to the issue of Thanksgiving nearly, nearly from cover to cover of the Bible. Individuals offered up sacrifices out of gratitude in the book of Genesis. The Israelites sang a song of thanksgiving as they were delivered from Pharaoh's army after crossing the Red Sea. Later, the Mosaic Law set aside three times each year when the Israelites were to gather together. All three, three of these times, the Feast of uh, Passover, Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Ingathering or Tabernacles involved, involved remembering God's provision and grace. Harvest and tabernacles took place specifically in relation to God's provision in the harvest of various fruit trees and crops. The book of Psalms is packed full of songs of thanksgiving, both for God's grace to the Israelite people as, as a whole through his mighty deeds, as well as for his individual graces to each and every one of us. In the New Testament, there are repeated admonitions to give thanks to God. Thanksgiving is to always be a part of our prayers. Some of the most remembered passages on the giving of thanks are the following. Rejoice always, it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16-18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. We also read in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, be anxious for nothing. It literally reads in the Greek, stop worrying about one little, every little thing or one little thing. He says, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Therefore, also it says in 1 Timothy 2, 1, therefore I exhort first of all that supplications Prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men. Of all God's gifts, the greatest one he has given is the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross at Calvary. Jesus paid our, our sin debt, so a holy and just God could forgive us our sins and give us eternal life as a free gift. This gift is available to those who call on Christ to save them from their sin in a simple but sincere faith. For this gift of his son, the gift which meets our greatest need, the Apostle Paul says, thanks be to God 
for his indescribable gift. You know, as we look to our relationship with our Heavenly Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth, how can we not give him thanks for the beauty of the, of the sky and of our world and all that goes on in our families and friends, the, the love relationship that he teaches us about through his son, Jesus Christ, the forgiveness he's given us, the grace he's given us, and by the way, eternal life in heaven forever and ever and ever will be radically changed without sin, without death, without devil hassling us, will be living for the Lord Jesus Christ. My favorite psalm to always read on Thanksgiving is this. It's Psalm 100, very simple, very basic, very brief, but so powerful. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. The whole earth needs to be making a joyful shout to God our Creator. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. We all want to serve the Lord. We serve the Lord by serving one another. For to serve each other, to bless each other, to help each other, to share with each other. And uh, let's get rid of our criticisms and our complaints. Amen? Let's live for the Lord God. Let's serve one another with gladness, he says, with gladness. Take that trash out with gladness, with all those Thanksgiving uh, bones and so forth, right? The turkey bones. Then he says this, he says, Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. He's always providing for us, the sheep of his pasture. Sheep are always provided for by the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. He's the chief shepherd of our soul. He is the shepherd that is always there for us. And when we're wounded, we're hurt, he picks us up, he puts us on his shoulders, and he carries us through those trials and tribulations until we're safe and sound. This is the love of our Savior. Finally, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Truth is found in the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. He's the Son of God who sacrificed himself for our sins and has granted us everlasting life in heaven. The beautiful, the beautiful relationship that we have with God, our Creator, our Heavenly Father, as well as His Son, our Savior, and we are His bride, His bride, He is our bridegroom. And thus, we are the sheep of His pasture, of which He always takes care of us. We always, each and every day, enter into those courts but with praise and thanksgiving unto Him because He is so deserving of all things. We all look forward to going to heaven. We'll be so grateful when we get there. But let's be grateful here with family and friends on this very special day we call Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much now. Enjoy. Have a great time. Feast with one another. Enjoy that turkey, those sweet potatoes, or whatever you serve at your uh, particular uh, uh, Thanksgiving meal. But just make sure you follow what Jesus said. He says, love one another as I have loved you. May you have a beautiful and loving and thankful Thanksgiving. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.